Obviously, when you tour, there's a lot of stadiums involved, um, and I'm sure you go to a lot of a lot of different games. So, do you have a go-to food that you that you just have to get every time you go to a ballpark? I'm not really a big sports guy. <laughs> I swear to God, it's like really? yeah, like I like esports, and I like uh, honestly for me, this isn't even about baseball, which no. is dope. I will say, baseball is probably my favorite sport, right. and then basketball. But I haven't been to a lot of games. You know, I don't know. It's it's really weird. But when they told me. There was free food here. <laughs> you just have to come. I showed up. You man. have to come. Yeah, yeah. No, but I guess uh, you know, chili dogs and nachos. That's where it's at. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you're gonna pick out today for sure. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> you know what I'm talking? It's almost like a supermarket in there, right? Oh, my guy with the what? reference. What? Bow! What? You just snapped. <laughs> that was great. That was actually pretty good. That was uh, that was a pretty good novel as well. Uh, tell me about that transition going from a lyricist to an author. I mean, I don't know shit about writing. <laughs> Can I cuss? You can do whatever you want, man. Fuck yeah. I don't know shit about writing, man. I, uh, I, you know, I didn't graduate high school, but just because you know, I don't have some piece of paper that says I can or cannot tell a story, I said, screw that. I'm going to do my best to envision this world, this uh, universe, have fun with it, right. and try to you know, spread a positive message in a book. Screw it. And I, and I mean, it's you know, number one New York Times bestseller two weeks in a row, over 120,000 uh, copies sold. I can't freaking First rapper. It. Yeah, to ever release a novel and, and have it go number one. So I'm just excited. I'm happy. I'm humbled. I can't freaking believe it. It's insane. It was a. It was incredible. And you also did a soundtrack for that. And I'm excited because you got Tomo from. Uh, he used to be in Thirty Seconds to Mars, yeah, yeah. man. So like he got to write with you and uh, produce yeah. the record. Like yeah, what no. was that like? He's fantastic, man. Everybody on the squad is incredible. But I've known Tomo. We were just friends, you know. And back when he was at the band, he was always like wearing my sh my shirts on stage and. Just showing so much love to me, and you know, I love his wife uh, Vicky. She's the sweetest. And every time I'm in Detroit, I see him. Or when they're in LA, we hang out. Right. And it was amazing to finally, actually, you know, when you're friends with somebody for so long, and then you like sit down and actually work with them creatively. It's, it's. I think it's even more special than just some kind of like setup, you know, session between two musicians. It was incredible. I love that you were singing a lot more on this record. Like, yeah. I, I was like, is this really, is this really a Logic record? Like, I know, I man. Love that, man. I, lo I love your voice, Thanks. dude. Like, I you got to do that a little more. Well, I've been having fun, and I just wanted to do it for fun. You know, creating a soundtrack for a novel. People thought it was weird, and I'm like, weird's good, different is good. But I got an album coming called Confessions of a Dangerous Mind, which is super hip hop. Yeah. I did this to experiment. You know, they always say one for them, one for you, one for them, one right, for you. Right. So that was for me, and this next one's for the world. So I feel like the soundtrack you kind of challenged six as far as the production goes, because it sounds like there's full live instrumentation. So is that safe to say? Yeah, thanks for doing your fucking homework. Dude, I've been trying to get with you for a long ass time. Yeah, I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, Six, who you mentioned, is my brother, my homie, my main producer, he's fantastic. And yeah, I mean, like, if anything, he challenged me, because he used to be in a band in high school, and he's right. playing guitar his whole life. So he really knew much more musically than I did. And how is he challenging you on this upcoming record? Um. His beats are insane. Like, they're just another level of sonics within hip hop. So, like, hearing these different pockets and cadences that I have to, like, catch and rap over, right. it, was, uh, it was fantastic. But I had a great job. I mean, I had a great time, and he did a great job. <laughs> now, another question I had for you was I'm just catching up on all the years that I've been trying to get with you. Um, another question I have for you is you, co you collaborated with Ryan Tedder yeah. on your last record. Yeah, that was sick. Um, what was that? I mean, he's one of my favorite lyricists as well. So, like, yeah, yeah. What, was, what was that writing process with him? It was so fun. We did that We did that song in like 20 minutes. From the production to the lyrics to the raps, like, Damn. it just happened, man. It was just a positive message. One day, if you continue and you persevere, everything's gonna work out. Like, that's what it is. And so, you know, that in, in combination with the video of, you know, treating human beings equally, right. it was amazing. I think it's very powerful when an artist can stand up, be brave, and spread a positive message, even in a world uh, where others may not agree, which is completely fine. Right. But knowing that I could spread a message and, and be behind such a positive message, knowing that I may receive such hate from a certain demographic, it's a scary thing, but I'm proud. I'm proud of him, and I'm proud of you know the team, and I'm proud of what we committed to and executed. Right. Yeah. I feel like your upcoming album is going to be a scary thing, because you're kind of touching on social media a little more yeah. on this. Yeah. So, you know, vulnerability, I feel like, played a, a big role on it. Um, how do you open up like that, especially because you've been open about anxiety and dealing with stuff like that? Yeah, man, you just got to be honest and not really give give a shit yeah. like you know honestly because 
when you start to worry about what people are going to say or how they're going to perceive you or being scared to say things, then it's almost like you feel like you're being silenced. Yeah. And you never want to be silenced. You know, you want to be able to, to speak about the things that are on your mind. And to me, social media is incredible. It's phenomenal. It's amazing. It's gotten me where I am today. But at the same time, it's extremely negative. And there's so many harsh things. I mean, I'm constantly, you know, you know, people are bickering over me, calling me names. There's negative things. But by a million, ten million fold, the positive outweighs the negative. So, right. but sometimes, I mean, I like to refer to it as the loud minority, if you will. Okay. Um, but, I mean, that's why I don't really spend a lot of time on social media. Yeah. You know, except when I come here and yeah, gorge my face. And I mean, you're trying to be an author, a writer, yeah. everything, man. Like, next thing you know, you're going to do a workout video. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, maybe my if my trainer, Pepe, gets me to do that, I'll do that. <laughs> well, dude, thanks so much for hanging out with me. It's a pleasure. Thanks. Can't wait for the new record. Congratulations. Pussy. All right. <laughs> Take it easy, man.